Hey everybody, how's it going today? It is me, Captain Energy, and today I'm going to be answering some questions that were posed by some of my subscribers. Now, a couple of these are workflow type items, and some of them are items that will help you uh, if you're a sound designer or you're trying to get your music to other reason users for remixes and such. These are a couple things that will help you stand out. Now, these are not your typical production type tips. You may not see these anywhere else but here on the internet, so I advise you to please hang around and like and subscribe to the channel if this type of content is something that you're interested in having. All right, so we're gonna start out with, this is the simplest one, we're gonna hit this one up fast. Uh, one of the questions was, how do I create a shortcuts folder? Now a shortcuts folder is a folder where you put sounds that you use all the time so that you can get to them quicker. You'll notice there's one here, the showcase, and it's got a bunch of sounds that that Reason Studios decided were important or whatever. They put them in there. That's great. But now I want my own shortcut menu. There are sounds that I use all the time, and I want to be able to get to them, like maybe some 909 kits and some synthesizers that I really like. All you need to do is go down to the bottom of this part of the screen right here. You see this little plus sign that I'm hovering over right now? If I click that, it will create a new folder. It lets me name the folder, calling it Caps Folder. And in here, you'll see there's nothing yet. But if I go over and look at the sounds that are available, so say I really like these harp sounds. I can grab this harp glissando, drop that in there. Maybe I want some string sounds. So I'll go over here and pick this sounds here. Any sounds I want to bring over here. Now, if I click this Caps Folder, you'll see that there are the sounds that I just chose. They're available for me to just drag out, drop into my project. That's it. Basically, that will help you get to the sounds you want to get to quicker. Now, when you do this, it doesn't actually copy the sound there. It just creates a shortcut. So don't worry if you accidentally bring something over and you need to get rid of it, just get rid of it. Right click it, click delete. And then it even tells you right here, are you sure you want to delete the selected item? Note that this only deletes the shortcut from the favorites list. The actual file is not affected. So basically, I can fearlessly blow stuff away in there without worrying about losing it off my hard drive. I can also go to the whole folder here and I can delete the entire folder. Same way, same thing. The reason you might want to do this is maybe you're working on a particular project and you're assembling sounds for it and, you know, at the end of the project you're like, well, that's I'm not going to need those sounds anymore. <laughs> you can just clear them and that way it makes it easier for you while you need the sounds. So next, let's take a look at how you can make your songs stand out. If you're sending a song out that was created in Reason to another Reason user and you want them to right away know what's going on or be able to give them information or have a link or an email that they can get in touch with you at, how would you do that? If you go right over here and click File and if I go to Song Information right here, I can go right into this window here and throw any text I want to put in here. You can have information here, like text that shows in the window is the title, the title window. You can have more information here. You could put like artists that were involved, singers, uh, participating songwriters. Maybe you want to have uh, contact information for other people here, like phone numbers or whatever. Here you can put your, your URL to web page or you could put your YouTube and you can test it out here to see if it opens up and hey look at that handsome fella all right uh, here's email so they'll be able to actually once they get the song they'll be able to just click that and it will open their mail client and create an email to me right there and finally the last thing is you can go right here see the song splash if I go right here and pick a picture up to 256 by 256 that's what they recommend 256 by 256 pixels and I think it's the only size I've got to actually work in here um, it will include that image right there so when they open up this song all right that image will come up so for example if I go ahead and save this song save as test okay and now I'm going to go and create a new window as though nothing were ever open and I'm going to close this one because if you don't close it for this test, it won't open the song. It will just take you to the other window. As I open it up, the person opening the song will be presented with whatever image you put in there. And then if they click uh, show info, they'll get the heading to the title type information you put in there, the name of the song, some kind of a heading, then the description you put in there with whatever other information you have in here. They can go to that website by clicking browse. And they can send me an email or send an email to you or whatever by just clicking info. 
and that's not set up on my machine, so just ignore that part because I use a web client. But you get the idea. It sets it up so that it can do all these things, and they can go back to the splash screen again. And that is how you customize your song so that it's easier for somebody to get information or so that you can share anything you want there and make it just a really cool thing. You'll notice that they use this in every demo song that Reason Studios provides. I'll put a link down in the description so you can take a look at some of those songs, and you'll see what I mean in ways that this can be used to get information to people who might be opening your song in Reason. So that is how you customize the look of your song. Next, have you ever created a drum kit in Kong Drum Designer and thought, man, this is pretty cool, but they all look exactly the same. Every one of them looks like the same drum kit, and it's kind of hard to tell what's going on if you've got multiple drum kits going on in here, okay? Uh, maybe this one is my drum kit. Maybe this one has, you know, vocal samples that I'm you know, little uh, screams and, you know, oohs and ahs. Uh, and then this one here is some proprietary drum kit that I put together and I want it to really stand out. Well, if you right click that drum kit, you can add backdrops to it. You can select a backdrop for the drum kit. You can also select a backdrop for it when it's folded. Now, what does that mean? Folding is this right here. If you click this little arrow, it closes it up so it's kind of out of the way. I use this a lot to get stuff, you know, make stuff a little more manageable on my screen. It folds them up, and there it is. It's just short and, and that type of thing. But if I go here, they still, they all look the same. You know, nothing really stands out. So if this were right here, I was using this one for telling you this is the custom drum kit before, so I'm going to stick with that. If I right-click this, and I go down to select backdrop when folded, and then I've created these ahead of time. I'll put the dimensions down in the, in the comments or in the uh, description for you. And you can create a backdrop for your drums when it's folded. So when you have them folded, you'll still, instead of seeing this Kong Kong, you can see this one, Captain Energy Drums, or whatever you want, your name uh, drums or something like that. And then when it's open and they all look the same, you can add, also add a background here. Right click that again and I hit select backdrop. There's my backdrop. Click select backdrop and now I'm going to select this backdrop right here. Now these I created earlier, like I said, but you can create your own, any backdrop you want. And there, now I can see if I go right here, I can see, I know which one is the one that I've I want to look at because it, it stands out. It's not just another boring looking drum kit. I'll say it's like a little bit of a slice of a combinator without being a full combinator edit type thing. But there are things you can do in here that you can't do with the combinator. Um, even though the combinator is quite capable, there are things you can't do with it. Like, for example, you can't have buttons that trigger without locking down. There's not like a press and release button. There's only... Uh, toggle switch type buttons. So on, then click it again to turn it off. So this is really another cool little thing here. The other thing that you can do, if you want to distribute sounds, I went over this in my last video, one way to distribute sounds and what I recommend for organizing your sounds uh, and how to zip them and send them to a friend. But one of the other things that was requested is that I show you how to create a refill. Now, if you're new to Reason, you may not know what a refill is. What a refill is, it's a way to package up sounds that you created in Reason into one archive file that shows up on your screen like these right here. See where it says orchestra sounds right here and factory sounds? And then when I click it, you'll see that it, oh, it says, oh, these are all the factory sounds. I can go in here and I can think, oh, Maelstrom patches. That's what I want is something from Maelstrom. Open that. And then it shows all these patches. If I just grab any of these patches, it will open up the instrument. And it'd be really cool if you could make this type of thing, right? It's a single file. I can email it to a buddy and he can have all the sounds that I've created in one file. Well, how would you create something like this? Well, simple. Reason Studios provides a product called Refill Packer. I'll put a link down in the description so you can find out where to get it. But Refill Packer looks like this. And if you've got a Mac or a Windows machine, the two files that you would need are on here. Just pick the one that's appropriate for your operating system. Once you've got that selected, what you would do is you would execute it on a PC or you know just double click it on a Mac. And once it's installed, what you will have is an application that looks like this when it's opened right here. And what you'll be thinking is, 
is, well, how does this work? Because I can't click on any of these text fields. Nothing's working. Well, the situation with this is that you need some support files for it to work. To get to those support files, you would go to your hard drive wherever you installed the refill packer. In this case, that would be drive D on my machine, program files, and then we go to propeller heads and we go to refill packer. Once we're in refill packer, this is the template folder and we have some other folders here. There's some sample folders with some other stuff that you can try out. You can build your own. This is an example of one that's already set up nice. And there's your documentation right here too, if you decide you want to look at that. It's a PDF. But what you want to do is you want to go to this template folder and copy these two files, splash and info text. Okay, copy that. And now what you want to do is go to the folder that you want to make into a refill. In my case, that's the music folder, then reason, and I call mine patch box. Here in patch box, you'll see that there's a subtractor patch. There's not much in here. This is basically built for the demo. But any patches I have in here, if you follow the my last video, which I'll put a link to, right up top here you'll understand the, the way you should store your samples and such but once you create a folder that contains all the patches you want to put into a refill what you do is you go to that folder and you paste those two documents we copied right here so there's the splash screen which looks like this right now it's a little refill icon i'm going to leave that alone you can create your own if you want but uh, i just it's fine the way it is. It's all right. I'm not going to do anything crazy with it. Um, and here's info.txt. Now, info.txt, if I double click it, it opens up in Notepad. It will open in something on your system, usually because .txt is usually associated with some type of file or some type of editor, I should say. Once it's open, when you look in here, it will say uh, character encoding. Don't worry about this line. Not important to us. But name is where I give this... I say what the name of this refill is. And I'm going to call it Caps Refill. And then I go down to where these question marks are. And because it says copyright, when? When's the copyright? So I'm going to put in 2022. Maybe I want to put my URL here, which I will in this case. There we go. Now that'll take you to my YouTube. In the comments here, we would add any kind of comment that we want to add to describe the samples or sounds that are in a refill. So for example, if the name of your refill is Caps Christmas Refill. Maybe I'll put in here lots of sleigh bells jingling and uh, reindeer prancing around the room in this sample pack. <laughs> just saying. Um, and, uh, and that would be just a description. And that will get saved with the file. So I'm just going to type in here. It can be anything. Uh, as long as it's text. And you only use double quotes on the outside of this variable like that. Now I'm going to hit save. Control save. Now, when I go back over here to the refill packer, as I said, you can't type in any of these, but what you can do is you can say, what folder am I going to work with? So I click this little folder here. I bring it down to E, which is where I'm at. Then I go again, music, reason, patch box. That's where I have my stuff. So I'm gonna click okay. And now it picks up that text file and it goes, okay, in this text file, you said this is called Caps Refill. It's copyright 2022. Here's the URL you want to reference there. And here's some comments that you wanted to add to this. I don't know what external refills are for. I think that's if you want to bring another refill in with this refill. Uh, I'm not sure how that works. So I, I'll have to look into that. But uh, once you're all done with that, you just go right here and you say output. Where do I want to put this when it's done being made, right? I'll just drop it in my music folder. And now if I just hit create refill, reasons refill packer will go through all the files and drop in my music folder, which is where I said to put it, you'll see a file called capsrefill.rfl. This is the contents compressed into a refill. This is the log file. So you can see what actually happened. It just says packing complete because there was not a lot in there. There was one file. And now that this is done, I can take this and just send it to a friend and they can get all the samples that I have or sounds right out of it. If I drop it right here in, in Reason, you'll see subtractor patches. And I can just grab these this patch out and... And that's it. I just sent myself or created a, uh, a refill for myself there that I can then distribute or have just for myself to keep everything bundled together nicely. And that is pretty much it. So 
What'd you think of those tips? I hope those are things that you'll be able to use and you'll find helpful for your future in making music and making sounds and sending things to friends and sharing with the community. If there's anything else like this kind of tip that you're looking for, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. I really would appreciate it um, as I have put a lot of work into making a lot of these videos lately. It would be nice for YouTube to realize that I'm actually putting work in and people care enough to see it. That'd be awesome. Anyway, thank you so much for spending some time with me. I hope these are helpful to you. Have a great night and I will see you all in the next one. Be safe. Bye for now.